Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 130. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 126 to 130. Hey, this YouTuber said, I have a little database with all of my transactions for my brand new business. And I want to be able to just add transactions and have a little summary of revenues and expenses over to the side automatically calculate as I enter new records. Well, the amazing thing about Excel lists or Excel tables is that they have dynamic ranges. Now, what is a list table database? Field names at the top, variables are in field. Uh, the fields and columns, records are in rows, and there's no blanks, no blank columns or rows. Now this person put expense and revenue, which could have just been an amount column because we have this revenue and expense here. Uh, but nevertheless, we will convert this to a table and all of these ranges, the date range, the expense range, etc., will automatically update as we add new records to the bottom. So that means our formulas will automatically update. So let's go ahead and convert this to a table. In 2003, control L for list. I'm going to click escape. And in 2007, control T. I'm going to say my table has headers. It always has to have headers. You should, if you don't, it's uh, not very efficient. Um, and there's the range. And click OK. Now let's go over and we're going to create, we're going to actually do an array formula. You actually, we could do something similar to what we could do with pivot tables, but it wouldn't be as compact and neat. And you would have to make formulas in the pivot tables. So I like this array method better here. Now we need our dates up here and we want to do something very specific. We don't want to type in January, February, etc. Because we need to have a, a date, a serial date. You know, if you type in 1 slash 1 slash 2008, if you control 1 to show format cells, that's date formatted. But if you show general, what is that? 39,948. Uh, that's the number of days since uh, December 31st, 1899. Serial date. Why? So we can do date math. And we're going to need to do that here. So I'm going to control Z. Now, and this is not 8, it's 7. So I'm going to put a 7. Control Enter. Now we need that date there, but I'd like to show the word January there instead. So we'll use custom number format. Control 1, go to number, down to custom, and there's the default date format. So I'm going to highlight that and just type MMM. Notice January, the number is still there, but it will show January, which is exactly what we want. We need the serial number for our array formula. Now, we're going to click in this cell right here and build our array formula. And if we think about this, there's two criteria. We, gotta, we have to look through this little database through the dates and find only the January ones. And since that's a month, we can use the month function. And we need to look at either revenue. Oh, wait a second. We need to copy this over. Let's point to that fill handle. And we see that crosshair or angry rabbit. Click and drag. Oh, January's. We don't want that. No way. With dates, serial dates, there's a great smart tag. If you click on that little drop down, you can point to fill months only, and it will fill the months. Back to our formula. We need to compare the uh, January to the date column and the revenue or expense. That first R or that first E in this text string here to this, this column. And then we need to either add the expenses or the revenues. All right, let's do our array formula. I'm going to Alt equals for auto sum, and then open parentheses, because we're going to have to string together a bunch of true falses. Now, the first true false, let's do month first. Now, if we were just to highlight the, the column over there, it wouldn't work. We're going to use the month function, because then it will convert those dates to numbers like 1 for January, 12 for December. Month function. Scroll over, click in the top cell in your date field, control shift and down arrow, then F4 to lock it. And you need to put a closed parentheses on that month. Now we need to, this is a bunch of uh, values now, 1 to 12, and we need to say, are those equal to and month and compare it to this column? 
which is January, or the serial number under there. Now, this cell reference right here needs to be locked when I'm going to the side, because I when I go, I'm sorry, lock going down, because for revenue and expense, it needs to look at January. But when it jumps over here, it needs to move to February. So I'm going to F4, F4 to lock it in front of the row reference only. Then I'm going to close parentheses for this month, and then close parentheses for the series of true falses. Now, we need to, and you know, if this is uh, um, your first array formula. You should actually probably read the notes up here and go, well, I have some beginning array formulas. But you know, you can always prove it to yourself by highlighting um, all the way to the two months and then hit F9. You can see it's just a bunch of uh, falses and trues. It looks like there are no Januaries. Control Z, that F9 trick, it shows you, evaluates whatever you have in your formula, but you better control Z to put it back to the actual formula. Now we need to multiply all those trues and falses times a new array. We need to look at the revenue, the, the R's and the E's. So I'm going to, in this new parentheses, get the this column. Click there, control shift down arrow, and then F4. And that has to be equal to what? Oh, we have to somehow extract an R here and an E here, so we'll use the left function. And I'm going to click on that text string. That cell reference, when we copy it all throughout this row, needs to be locked on the column. So when we copy it across columns, it's locked. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, F4. Dollar sign in front of the I. No dollar sign in front of the 15. So when we copy down, it picks up the E close parentheses, and then close parentheses on that bunch of trues and falses. So trues, falses times trues and falses, only when it's true, true will a true be delivered. And we need to multiply that by, now whoops, this person had this set up here and here. If it was just one column of numbers, we just highlight the numbers, but now we got to figure out how to get uh, a column of expenses when we're in this row right here and a column of revenues when we're in this row here. No problem. We'll use the if. And guess what? The if can deliver ranges instead of just values or formulas. So we use if, open parentheses, and we'll use our little test to see if there's an R there. Left of that, locked going to the side, dollar sign in front of the I, but not the 15. Close parentheses. And that has to equal what? In quotes, R. And guess what? For this row, that'll be true. But for this one, it will be false, which is exactly perfect for our if. If the value is true, we'll put comma. And now we just deliver the range, all the revenues. And we have to highlight this by hand because there's a bunch of blanks there. F4. So now that there's a value of true, please deliver that range, comma. And then what if the value is false, which means it's not an R, which means it's an E. Now we go get our expenses. And I'll highlight all the way down, F4. And now I can simply close parentheses. And there you have it. We have a criteria with the month comparing to the date column, criteria with the R or the E, and then delivering one of two ranges. Now I, to enter this array formula, I have to hold Control and Shift and then Enter. Zero for January because you didn't start the business till later. Copy it down and then copy it over. And now we can see that it's summarizing. Now, the most amazing thing here is the fact that these will update because we have a list here. So let's go down to the bottom of our table and click in the last cell. And when you have a table with any table or list, when you get to the end, if you hit Tab, adds a new record. Notice we went down to row 38. I'm going to type CVB. And this was a haircut. And it was on 9 slash 1 slash 2007. A revenue tab, tab, and we'll say $30. I'm going to control enter, not just to keep that cell highlighted, and then go see if my formula is up here updated. Sure enough, they did. Dynamic, dynamic ranges there. You can see it got to 38. Now let's do one more and just see how wonderful this is. That 38 will actually change to 39 as we add a new record. Get to the end, tab, C, D, D, and this is going to be another haircut. It'll be 9 slash 2, revenue, and then we'll say 100. That was a super special haircut. Control Enter and go up here, 
And sure enough, we have our um, 130. But if we click here and hit F2, F2, you can see that it changed to 39. Those are dynamic ranges. We have a, uh, some array formulas to do this. And uh, that is how to make a basic income statement, revenue expenses, net income from our Excel list. We'll see you next trick.